All right. All right. There we go. All right. So since you've been out here for three years and you've been flatbedding, what was some of the what was some of the interesting places that that uh that you went to as far as flatbedding goes? Um you mean like interesting uh, places that I deliver or pick up from or just yeah, places yeah. on the road in general? Yeah, freight on the road in general. What, what, what have you hauled that was interesting? I mean, I don't think any of it's really interesting. I mean, I've, I haul machines sometimes, you know, bobcats and caterpillars and um, huge engines. Uh, right now I got a load of... Uh, large HVAC units um, or AC units and um, I don't think any of it's really interesting product. I think the places that I deliver are interesting. Like one time I or, I uh, delivered to the Kawasaki plant and um, you know I, I told the guard at the door I was like I'm going to go to the bathroom and go through. He was like, "Oh yeah, the bathroom thing. The bathroom was way in the plant, like deep in the plant." And so I, he didn't like chaperone me or anything. So I just kind of took a walk around the plant. <laughs> and the cool thing about Kawasaki, I learned, is that they make pretty much everything on their vehicles and ATVs, whatever they make. You know, um, they make everything. The bolts, the screws. I was. It was pretty cool. Now, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, I'm done. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so now that now you know, of course you you know you've been driving three years and all like that. What made you decide to come on uh, TikTok of all platforms to uh, you know to do your you know to do your social media? Do you have other? I I know you have uh, Instagram, but do you have any other social media outlets that you uh? that you post to? It's just those two, really. I, I have other um, accounts and stuff on different platforms, but I really don't use them. Um, but yeah, so I started doing TikTok. Uh, before it was TikTok, it was, uh, what's it called? Musical, musically? Yeah. Or whatever it used to be called. It was another, and then, and then it became TikTok. So I was on Musical.ly for briefly, briefly. I had just gotten into it. And then I guess it turned to TikTok and then I never was interested until I started trucking. And um, another driver that I know that does flatbed, he does a lot of TikTok. So I was like, you know, watching his videos and stuff. I was like, man, I think he's to have fun making videos like this. And so I, I just started doing it just for fun, just for something to do out here. Because I'll be honest with you, I, I don't care about how many followers or likes or views that I have. Uh, I think I think it's just fun to make these videos. I think they're hilarious, some of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just sharing, like, my perspective and – then if people enjoy it, that's cool, and I enjoy having conversations with them about it. But I honestly just started doing it as something fun to do on the road and a way to like document my my uh, career or my journey with trucking and um, a fun way to make memories. I guess. All right, all right. So TikTok, not a fan. <laughs> but I, you know that that's where I find a lot of interesting people. A lot of crazy stuff from from that app. So so much success to you on uh on on that. Um so what are what what are some you know, you've been driving for a while and and three years is uh you know is not long, but it's still, you know, a long time yeah. for you while you still, you know, learning and 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 getting the ropes and everything before you actually get into your own truck. But what are some of the fears going into it? Like, you know, when you first got into trucking, like what were some of the fears that 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 you had coming into it? And what do you and do any of that still scare you to this day? Um, I really didn't have any fears, honestly. Like it just felt so right to me and so good. Um, my honestly 
honestly, I'll tell you, my biggest fear coming into it is that I wouldn't get into it. My biggest fear was that something was going to prevent me from trucking, whatever it might be. I, I couldn't think of anything that would, but, you know, there were a lot of hoops to jump through um, and things that went wrong that I had to redo and and uh, delays because, you know, other people messed something up in the process. So. Honestly, that was that was my only fear was, man, what if this, what if I don't get to do it? Um, but going into it, you know, I guess I'm afraid of crashing or killing somebody. Obviously, uh, I feel like every driver has that fear, and if they don't, then they they need to hang up their keys because you always need to have that fear in the back of your mind, or else you're going to get a little too cocky and too comfortable, uh, and that's when you start messing up and get sloppy. Okay, that's what's up. All right, well, some of the some of the things that's that's been happening in 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 trucking uh, lately. Have you you know have you seen? You just said you wasn't involved with a crash, but have you have you seen an accident that that kind of like shook you a little bit, and you said to yourself, "This this is the wrong industry." Uh. So the first part of that question, have I seen an accident that has shook me? Absolutely. Several of them. But never once did I think, oh, I'm doing the wrong, you know, maybe this is the wrong thing for me to be doing. Every single time I saw them as reminders of don't get too comfortable. Do not get too comfortable. Always keep your head on the swivel. You know, even if you're just driving through the desert for 10 hours, you know, on a straight road, like always keep your head on a swivel because it's just the most random things that are will happen. And, and, and I feel like doing flatbed helps me keep that in my mind because we have to secure our load, you know, not preparing for everything to go smooth. We have to secure them uh, in, in, while, in our mind, preparing for the work, essentially. So, like, I'm going to put the maximum amount of securement and then, and then some um, because I'm, I'm preparing for, well, what if things go wrong? Um, and so for me, in my mind, that's always in my mind, always. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So you went to, of course, you went to Prime, got your license through Prime and everything, trifecta and everything. Uh, trucking school, what, what do you think? What, what do you think or what do you feel now that they would have had taught you but you learned it the hard way out here on your own. Um, like I said, like I got really lucky with my trainer and, and I feel like he made the difference. He taught me so much that I really haven't been put in that situation yet. Uh, where, I mean, really the worst thing is, is, was not knowing where all the air filters were, right? Okay, not that big of a deal. It could be, because that could cost me money, you know, if I don't change it out and it messes something up. But it was just like little things like that. Like, oh, where where are, are all the lines to drain my air tank? I thought I only had two. Turns out I have four. Um, you know, and even then, my trainer, I do remember him telling me about the air filters and stuff, and that's the reason why... Um, I knew that, you know, um, but which goes to say, like when I got out of this truck, by the way, like the training didn't end there. I'm still learning from him. I'll call him, you know, I called him about the air filters initially, you know, what, which air, where are the air filters again? Where are they? I need to change them out. You know, how often do I need to change them? Um, it's just small stuff like that. I lucked out. He taught me so much. He taught me, you know, all the ways to back, uh, back up my truck and trailer, um, how to chain up, how to keep, ice off the truck, how to keep the windshield from freezing over with ice uh, when it's snowing. Um, just random things that I hear people say uh, they don't know how to do or they don't know, but they're in their own truck already. And it just makes me, it kind of humbles me because I'm like, wow, like I really, I feel like I got training that maybe 50% of the industry doesn't get. All right. 
So with with women truckers out here, and there's a lot of you guys coming out here into this industry now. Y'all y'all stepping y'all stepping away from the conventional, you know, woman's work to come and rock out in a male dominated field. What what are what? Are, there's a two part to this, right? So some women, it's it's like you you get a lot of backlash. You would think you get a lot of backlash from the men, but majority of it comes from the women. Why do you think that? Especially in trucking, like you know, I know that some like let's take your comments for a sec uh, for a second in your in your TikToks. Majority of the backlash comes from the women. Why do you think? Why do you think women come so vicious towards other women? Don't don't you think that you guys are supposed to be? You know, at least a, a at least a little bit of unity between y'all, being that y'all that y'all stepping into an industry that's that's dominated by the males. Uh, I'm not sure where you're getting that idea from. In my comments, uh, I have a handful of women that I can think off off my head who have ever said anything sideways in my comments. Whereas there are countless men. Um, all the time, like too many, it's just kind of overwhelming. Um, I have never felt that there was this crazy backlash from other women in the industry. Um, I have, honestly, if there, if I was getting that much backlash from women, you would see, I would have a lot of video responses to them, but mm -hmm. I just never get that. Uh, it's the majority of the stuff, the bad things that are said to me are from men. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if you saw one conversation in, in my comments and thought that was well, what it's, all like or what. Well, it, it probably, definitely you know not what, how I feel. I, you know what I? You know what I go through a lot of TikToks, a, a lot of female trans yeah. TikToks. So my thought, if I, you know, if I put you in. Uh, put your comment session in with somebody else's comment session, but it's you know, but okay. I, I no you know, it was a general, it was a general question anyway, because like, like I talk to you know, I talk to a lot of female truck drivers, and out mm -hmm. out here, you know, out here, you know, while you guys out here doing the damn thing, I talked to the one female, uh, maybe last year. And she says that some of the, you know, that some of the females is just not, uh, not positive. Like, like, like the vibe. Like if y'all see each other in sure. a in a parking lot or in, at the fuel island, y'all be like, "Hey, what's going on, sister girl? Hey, and all like that." It's just, ugh, don't talk to me. Oh, and it's the same thing with the guys. Like it's the That's it's hilarious. the same thing. It's the same thing with the guys. You know, the same thing with the guys. You know, I look around and I'll be like, "Yo, bro, what's going on?" And dude, look at me like, like I'm crazy. Like, oh, okay, well, pfft, all right, keep it moving. But why? Why do you? Why? You know, in your opinion, why do you think there's no unity in trucking today? No unity in trucking in general. Yes. Um, you know, I don't know. There's so many of us um, doing the same thing, but we all have different perspectives on it, and we all have different experiences doing it. So those experiences are going to form our belief, different belief on the way we think things should be. And, you know, that, I feel like that's just, that's just part of having a large variety of people working the same job. Um, I don't know how unity and trucking used to be. Um, that's, I, I honestly don't feel like there's this huge disconnection. I feel like, honestly, maybe social media blows it up a lot more. Um, because I know for a fact that anytime I've been in situations, whether it be, um, uh, you know, shut down because of weather or uh, the interstate shut down because of accident. Um, while there is a lot of, of people, you know, talking crap on the TV, if someone needs something, truckers come together. And a good example of that was um, I needed a uh, head fit to take a bolt out that I didn't have the right size for. And I went on the CD because I just knew. I was like, I bet someone will be willing to help me out. Got on the CD. Hey, does anyone have this size 
boom, this guy answers, you know, hey, I have it. I'm at the fuel island. I'm like, cool, can I just use it while you get your fuel and then I'll run it back over? Yeah, sure, go ahead. You know, I'm not seeing this crazy, like, you know, uh, disconnect between each other other than maybe not helping each other back up at truck stops because people want to sit there and film, you know, watch somebody. They'd rather watch you, you know, mess up so they can get a good video to post on TikTok. Um, but when it comes down to it, like chaining up, you know, when you come to spots where you have to chain up, I see other truckers helping other truckers. Someone, I just saw a TikTok the other day where uh, this guy was showing that one person was training his trainee on how to put chains on, and then a few truckers came over because they wanted to know too. And so he went ahead and just taught all of them how to do it. So I don't know. Like maybe I just don't focus on all the negatives in trucking. But I feel like my experience, like I haven't had these experience, experiences in the real world where there was just this, this thing for other truckers. Um, like when I say hello to other women, almost every time it's like we're excited to see each other. Like, oh, my God, you're driving too. Like we're happy to see each other out here. Hey, how you doing? Um, or if I need help, you know, and and – there's a, a man around because a lot of times there's not any women around either, but, uh, you know, whatever trucker will help me, if it's a man or a woman, I've never had anyone be like, no, nah, I'm not helping you, <laughs> you know, like, and I ask for help. I'm not too afraid to ask for help. Uh, I'd rather ask for help than sit there for two hours trying to figure it out myself. Okay, okay. What are before we get on up out of here? Uh, before we get on up out of here, I'm going to say first that thank you very much. I'm really, really enjoying our conversation. That's what we do over here on the Lockout Man Podcast Show. We have conversations, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, definitely sure. this won't be the first and definitely won't be the last, man. So, since you've been, uh, since you've been. It. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Since you've been with Prime for the last three years, I'm sure there's been some interesting places that you did uh, go. So what are some of your favorite sites or experience that you have encountered while you was OTR? Um, well, I've the Wind River Gorge is one of my favorites. You know, get out. There's plenty of spots to hop out of the truck and go hike or explore. Really, that's, I'm, a, I'm a nature nugget, so I love getting out, going hiking, jumping in a river, going swimming. Um, so anywhere I am in the National Forest, I'm pretty much happy. Um, you know, Portland is a great spot to go to the Dubit, stay there. I, I love going there. Um, I got a few truck stops, you know, that are just my favorite, and that's one of them. And then Flagstaff, uh, the Ambest and Flagstaff, there's a lot of good hiking back there behind it. I love it there. It's another great spot to go. So, right. pretty much where there's nature, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> All right. Now, since you mentioned truck stops, man, what, what what are some of the things that, what are some of the craziest or some of the things that you hate at the truck stops? For I mean, the typical stuff. Um, I'd say my biggest pet peeve is, in which I am guilty of, I've absolutely done this. Um, park it and not turn your headlights off, you know, right across the line and the truck's crossing me all night. Even if they have a, a curtain up, you know, it still shines through the cracks and stuff. And it's just rude. It's just, I, I have absolutely gotten into, into some altercations with other truckers over not turning their headlights off, especially when I'm trying to back into a parking spot. And I can't see anything, you know, because their life is so bright. <laughs> so that, that's just the normal things that annoy other drivers, annoy me too. Nothing really that interesting, you know, parking at the fuel island. I About <laughs> driver, I was behind a driver lost in a truck with the CG, you know. Just the stupid stuff that would piss anyone off or just really get under anyone's skin. All right, so I appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. For sure. How can... Uh, <laughs> for sure, man. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Now, being that you are uh, from TikTok, how, how can people find you on TikTok? Uh, look me up, Ripple. I go by Ripple. You can look me up, Ripple in sound, R-I-P-P-L-E underscore I-N underscore S-O-U-N-G. Ripple in sound. All right, Ripple. Thanks where, so much. Where, where the name come from? 
<laughs> that'll be another story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> you said that'll be another story. And it, and it, and you're exactly right. This won't be the last conversation we had, man. So, But thank you very much. Right, I really I appreciate do appreciate it. No doubt. No doubt, man. You stay safe out there. Yeah. And make sure you uh, drive safe yeah. and everything. And I will get back together again. All right, Ethan, man. Thank you so much. All right, holler later.